All right, live look outside. The bison farm there. You can see the raindrops coming down already, Keith. Yeah, and uh, a lot of us are getting this first round of rain. I have to give the small scale models credit, Brian. They pretty much were dead on on the timing of this. So now the question is, how do they do with the hard part? Right, the next <laughs> wave coming through. <laughs> the second part that's going to come through. So here's a look at the first round of rain. And we talked about how this would actually act to stabilize the atmosphere a little bit as it brings down some of that instability. But what we're going to be watching as this exits into the mid coast is just to the west here from Sebago back into the lakes region of New Hampshire. And we're watching in this zone to see what develops over the next couple of hours. You can do a lot of analysis on severe weather, which we've done over the last few days. But ultimately what it comes down to is kind of what we call radar babysitting. At some point, you just watch the radar and see what looks nasty and what doesn't and then project it forward from there. There's not a ton of sun out there, which I think is a bit of a limiting factor. A few breaks eh, trying to kick up in Vermont, but I think the more sunshine we could see, the better chance we have of those stronger storms. That being said, we haven't completely dodged this uh, system. As you can see, this model picks up some thunderstorms later today. It does more of a line segment, which we'd be more concerned about straight line winds and less concerned about possible spin up tornadoes. Typically, when you talk about spin up tornadoes, not always, but usually you've got individual what we call discrete cells thunderstorms and that's usually where those tornadoes come from. So this is four o'clock. So this line moves through pretty quick Four, five o'clock over southern Maine and then down east Maine. It's five or six that it rumbles through. But the dynamics up here are not as good. So they're more likely to be heavy thunderstorms with rain, but less chance of strong winds and rotation. So later tonight we start to clear out temperatures drop down into the mid 60s and then the headline tomorrow is going to be the heat and humidity easily starting in the mid 70s into the upper 80s to low 90s by tomorrow afternoon and dew points will be in the low 70s. So the heat indices will be in the mid 90s relatively quickly through uh, tomorrow afternoon once we get rid of these severe chances. That'll be the thing we're focusing on. So Storm Prediction Center still has a 5% risk of a tornado, which is actually relatively high. Keep in mind, the whole thing here is what storms develop, because we know the atmosphere has the potential to create some spin and give us some uh, quick tornadoes, but we have to have those thunderstorms coming through. So this is just saying we've got the possibility for it. That's why we're keyed in on it today and uh, into early this evening. So the front comes through and then we watch what happens on Saturday, which looks like it'll be showers, although it's worth noting some small scale models just have thunderstorms in the afternoon. And it's not a, a rainy day, but we're playing it rainy right now through Saturday afternoon and much cooler and drier on Sunday. Watch these dew points up from very uncomfortable, then boom, right down Saturday night into the 50s, maybe even a little bit lower briefly. So uh, we get a nice second half of the weekend and it looks really good through the first half of next week. Just ideal stuff, mid 70s, quite a bit of sun, low dew points in there too. So after the severe weather threat today, Brian, the thing I'd keep an eye on is Saturday afternoon. Um, hopefully this afternoon we can get a better clarity. Is that just a big line of thunderstorms in the afternoon or is it mm. actually raining half the day? That's a big difference. That would change plans yeah. quite a bit. Yeah. All right, Keith, thanks so much.